Our next speaker is Trisha Cruz, Patricia Cruz, who is the executive director of DataSite, um, our affiliate sister brother registration agency. Prior to running DataSite, she was the director um, at the California Digital Libraries of the University of California Curation Center, UC3. And she is also affiliated with Data One um, and co leading sustainability and governance activities. Trisha's moment also came at the very seminal age of age seven. Her first metadata moment was receiving her first library card. Where was that? Yep, it was in Sunnyvale. Su Sunnyvale, California. Sunnyvale Public Library, if anybody's ever been there. Okay, can you guys see the slides? Okay. Um, can I use the mic, Jennifer? So, um, I'm going to introduce ROAR, and uh, ROAR is a community initiative. You guys are the community, so this is going to be participatory. It's going to be really easy, hopefully fun. So ROAR is, hear me roar, like, ah, right? So anytime I say ROAR, I want the, everybody in the room to go, ah. <laughs> so it's going to be pretty easy. It doesn't take a lot of brain thought, so let's practice. Um, so let's uh, talk about ROAR. Oh my God, you guys are awesome. Okay, so let's get started and um, I'm going to go up to my little, no, I'll stay here. So uh, ROAR is a community initiative. <laughs> oh, I don't know how well this is going to work. Okay, <laughs> so uh, a community-led project to develop an open, these are all really important words, sustainable, usable, unique identifier for every research organization in the world. So, ROAR um, came about, <laughs> came about um, by uh, two issues. There currently is no open stakeholder governed infrastructure for research organization identifiers and their associated metadata, right? There's a lot of solutions out there, but none of them met all of that criteria. They exist for different business reasons. So we really wanted to come together and create something that was um, stakeholder governed and open. And organizations, there's a need. There's a definite use case. I think everybody in this room could say, we really need to have organization identifiers in order to connect people and um, places and things. So to understand ROAR, oh, that's getting weak now. Okay, to understand ROAR, we have to look back. Oh gosh, when I least expect it. Um, so we started working on this in 2016 and, um, and it's progressed throughout 2018. So in 2016, we held a series of workshops. Um, Jeff and I were at CNI in San Antonio on, and on the river walk and talking about how we need organization identifiers and pitching that to the CNI community. Force 11, um, we had a series of workshops and brought a bunch of people together to say, what's important about organization identifiers and why do you want them? Um, at Pitapalooza, how many people here have been to Pitapalooza? Yay, Pidpoos. Um, so uh, we really kind of, uh, again, talked with the community. And out of those, out of that conversation came three documents, um, really talking about a way forward. And we set out the principles of what we wanted in, um, in uh, uh, organization identifiers. And then we did a, 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 a landscape analysis. What's out there? What exists? What works? What doesn't work? Um, and then talked about the technical considerations. In 2017, we took that information and we formed a working group. And that working group um, contained about 17 organizations. And out of that came two documents, governance recommendations of what, how this needs to be governed and also the product principles and recommendations. So zoom ahead to 2018, January, we were in Girona, Spain, beautiful place. And um, we kind of launched the project and we did this in a couple of different ways. Um, we requested information for those that were interested to share how they could contribute to the initiative. Um, we had a, a big stakeholder meeting. Um, and then after that, ORCID, DataSite, and Crossref talked, um, worked really intensely together to think about how to move forward on this proposal. And as a consequence, we launched ROAR. 
in uh, September 2018. And so Roar is, is, is now available. Well, no, it's not available. Uh, Jeff would kill me if I said it's available. Um, the, product has, the project has started. Um, and so the partners on the project are the California Digital Library, um, Crossref, DataCite, and Digital Science. And I'll explain a little bit why digital science is involved. And the users, um, they're both contributors and consumers. Um, we think that the, the research community is obviously um, going to be a consumer of this, but also contributing data to, to the ROAR initiative. And so <laughs> we also, um, it's, this is really driven by the product principles and recommendations that I outlined um, that we came up with in 2017. Um, some of it we're not holding as specifically to it because um, what we're creating is a minimal viable, valuable registry. And uh, so you can't do everything off the bat, but we're going to uh, move forward and, um, and do something uh, that we think will meet some of those um, criteria. The prototype is going to be available in 2019, fingers crossed. Um, and so we're hoping to be able to show that to people at Pitapalooza in Dublin. So the product principles, kind of going back to that a little bit, and I'm not going to go through all of these extensively, um, but for Roar to be useful, it needs to aug augment the current offerings in a way that is open, trusted, complementary, collaborative, and not intentionally competitive. And these are some of the things that Jeff talked about of what you look, what you look for when you do collaborations. And so this is something um, that you know, we've thought long and hard about. And so we need unique identifiers. They need to resolve. Um, it needs to be information about the entity. It needs to be human, um, understandable, and machine readable. It needs to have an open API. We need to have record editing interface for authorized entity representative. Um, that number four is not going to be available on day one, but it's something that we're going to work on. Um, we need an administrative facility to correct and manage and crosswalk that data. Um, a public data dump, so it be, can be consumed by others for purposes that we, unintended purposes. And it needs to have a common and uniform set of metadata. So here's a, a list of our product recommendations. Again, I'm not going to go through these extensively, and um, you can look at the slides later. And we also have a poster over there, so if you want to hang out at the poster, um, somebody from uh, who's working on this can, can help you, guide you through this. So again, intended for the research community um, and focus on organization levels that are most pertinent for the affiliation use case. And this is a really important one. Um, who employs this particular person? Who educates this particular person? Who funds this particular person? So really those direct affiliations. Um, require metadata elements for each record so it's uniquely identified that organization so there's no blurry areas. Um, and so open criteria and documented processes for inclusion, exclusion, creating, emerging, and deprecating a raw record. Um, one, one of the, oh, <laughs> one of the, uh, oh, that was cute. Um, one of the uh, things that we get asked frequently, are we going to go backwards in time um, and think about um, what organization identifiers we need going backwards? We're not doing that off the bat, as you can understand that would be really, really hard to do on the first day. So we're really going forward, um, at least initially. So ROAR is a community Aww. initiative. Yay! Um, and we really need you to be part of that community. And so if you want to participate, go to um, that little uh, URL there. I'm not going to read it. Um, and you can sign up, and we'll keep you up to date on what's going on. So if there's any questions or... Yes, we have a question over here. Can we get a microphone for Chris Shillam? Oh, sorry. Sorry, what and was that? There's a right over there. Perfect. Hey, Chris Shillam elsewhere. Um, just wonder, Patricia, because you didn't reference it, any progress on figuring out the sustainability model for the registry? Right. Um, so that's another thing that internally we're working on. Um, is that uh, 
We are not quite sure uh, what the costs are going to be going into this. We have a basic idea what some of the costs are. Um, startup costs, as you know, are very different than maintenance costs. Um, and so those are some of the things that we're really um, detailing out. And thinking about the sustainability, um, is this, do people um, become a member of this um, community? Or is it um, kind of a utility that's provided by some of the um, uh, identifier provider communities? Um, just because it's, it helps support a lot of things that we're already doing. So I think that's something that we'll want to work with the community on and hear input on, on, on how we sustain it. Other questions? I think I saw someone in the back. Is that correct? Please raise your hands if you have Oh, wait. Questions. She was standing up and stretching and roaring. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. And again, there's a little poster over here if it, you have any questions. Oh. Oh, there is a question. Hi, Jennifer Klein from Adipon. Um, Crossref obviously already has uh, a list of organizations in the Open Funder Registry. And I was curious if there was any um, synergy between the two or things that you would adopt or lessons learned that you wouldn't adopt, um, any relationship like that. Um, so I will look to my Crossref colleagues to answer this, but if you see here, um, affiliation use case, who employs, who educates, who funds. So um, can I pass the microphone to Jeffrey? Um, right, so uh, the, the uh, longer term plan is yes to actually uh, merge these two things. Uh, at the moment, they're already linked um, and we'll continue linking them. So you will be able to crosswalk at least between, um, I'm not gonna say it because I don't wanna get scared when you all, <clears throat> Uh, crosswalk between the thing that cannot be named and open funder registry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Well, that was a very rousing tug on roar. Roar! <laughs> Thank yeah. you, everyone. We're going to take a short.